I was asked to do a video about patho PECs, and I haven't talked about that yet, so I figured this would be a good idea. And actually, I just worked with a patho PEC on Friday, so it's actually it's kind of fresh in my mind. So let me just go into pelvic position, because that's really what we're going to talk about. Pelvic position, left AIC, left pelvis comes forward, right pelvis comes back, orients the entire pelvis to the right in the vast majority of cases. A PEC is when the left AIC has become problematic for a particular individual, and in order to deal with asymmetry, the right side comes forward. And now you have both sides of the pelvis that are forward. That means, in response, the lumbar spine is arched on both sides, and quite often in the upper body you'll find externally rotated ribs. Their center of mass has shifted forward, so the ribs come up in front, so you have a bilateral rib flare. They're hyperinflated in the front, so all their air is in their chest. And everything in the back, remember, everything is being pushed up and forward. Everything in the back is tight. Their lower back is tight, their QLs are tight, the paravertebrals are tight, the, po the posterior rib cage in the mid-spine area, T8 area, tight. So your posterior mediastinum area, right underneath the shoulder blades, that's tight. Uh, the PEC is also externally rotated in general. They have an externally rotated orientation. You'll often find that their legs, their femurs, are externally rotated or turned out. They like to stand with their feet a little bit wider apart, and then the feet also externally rotated. Uh, everything is oriented to the outside. What makes it patho-P, and that's really not a big deal, it's not really a big step up from left AIC, it just means the right side is forward also. Where it gets more complicated is the patho-PEC. Patho-PECs are difficult because they have laxity. They have lost either ligamental support or they've lost integrity of other soft tissue like the muscles. Things are stretched out. And when things are stretched out, you lose compression in your joints. And unless a joint can compress fully, your, your brain can't sense position because you have all these mechanoreceptors, all these sensory receptors that are inside joints telling your body what you're doing, where you are, what foot you're on, where you're going, which direction you're facing. And when you can't get compression in these joints, your internal sensory perception of your own joints is not working properly. So you're kind of lost. And that also means without compression, you won't have good sense of the ground. And if you've watched my videos, you realize I talk about ground a lot. Pretty much everything can go back to how you're sensing the ground. Patho PECs will not be sensing the ground at all. And let me just go into why that may be. First of all, when feet on the ground, they're gonna be, if you ask them where they're sensing their, their, their weight, it's almost always gonna be forward. They're gonna, they're gonna feel their weight forward towards the balls of their feet. And in fact, you'll, if you watch them walk, they're often walking on the balls of their feet. They don't have heel strike because when the pelvis comes forward on both sides and their weight shifts forward, the pelvis moves forward compared to their knees. Now their knees are back here, and that pushes the weight forward on their toes. You'll often see they'll have very hyper, they'll often have hyperextended knees. They're almost always standing with knees locked because that's how they're stabilizing themselves. When this pelvis comes too far forward, the femurs are kind of popping out here, so they're stretched out on these ligaments, and they're, that's what's kind of holding them together because the muscles just aren't there anymore because they're so, they're just not positioned, the muscles aren't positioned to act correctly uh, to provide support. The femurs generally will be externally rotated on both sides, so they, they rotate out, and in that position, uh, you just, again, you're losing muscular integrity, you're losing stability. That's where they find themselves to be comfortable. They love to stand like that. Uh, they will lack hamstrings big time. They just have no sense of hamstrings. They're too stretchy. Uh, they can palm the floor quite often. Uh, and that they shouldn't be able to do that when a pelvis is forward on both sides. They should lack range of motion, but in reality, they're not lacking range of motion. They're just starting with a pelvis that's forward. So you shouldn't be able to get your, your leg, if you do a straight leg raise and you're going past 90 degrees on a pelvis that's forward on both sides, that's kind of problematic because it means they've been stretched out too much. 
Uh, they, again, they can palm the floor. They're just too stretchy. They are really uh, ligamentally loose. That's what makes them patho. They have no sense of their heels, their weight's forward. They have those hyperextended knees. They have really curved lower backs. Their ribs are really externally rotated and quite often they'll also have a forward head posture to try to maintain equilibrium, to maintain their balance. You'll often find them, they don't have great glute strength. Glutes might be atrophied. Uh, they might have bigger calves. Their calves might be functioning as their glutes. Their calves might be holding them up because everything is falling forward. Uh, they might, they probably look down a lot with their eyes because again, they don't have great sense of the ground. So if you can't feel the ground, you gotta look down instead. And of course, that's gonna create tension in their neck. A lot of times, a friend of mine who is definitely patho PEC, she came to me not too long ago because she was having headaches. And I've known she was patho PEC for quite some time. Uh, she's having headaches because when she has lack of stability in the pelvis, in the hip joints, and everywhere else, in order to, to maintain stability of this area, which is primary, this is where life occurs, because all this important autonomic nervous system function is all up here, this area tightens, so they'll have real tight jaws, and they might clench a lot to keep things stable. They're overusing their neck for breathing because they can't get their rib cage to expand backwards because they're so far forward. Temporalis muscles, masseter muscles are tight, uh, keeping their head up by using their jaw elevators, which bring their jaw up, so they're clenching a lot. Headaches, uh, temporal bones internally rotate, so they can be feeling a lot of tension there. Her, <laughs> her headaches went away simply by getting her to sense her hamstrings with her legs internally rotated. Now that position was really, really uncomfortable for her because she loves to be externally rotated. Internally rotating her thighs gave her adductors, gave her hamstrings. She could feel herself grounded, but it felt really bad to her. She hated it because she felt her hamstrings too much. Now this is someone who has hyperextended knees and could literally bring her, her, her foot back to her forehead pretty close to it without feeling any tension whatsoever. So giving her sense of hamstrings actually was able to autonomically uh, enable her headaches to go away. So the th important thing for pathos, for patho PEC is it takes a long time for a lot of people to start feeling better. I don't say a long time, but they have everything to work on. There's nothing that they don't need to work on. They need hamstrings, they need glutes, they need adductors on both sides, they need obliques on both sides. They have to stabilize their scapula, they have to stabilize, I'm sorry, they have to stabilize their scapula on top of their rib cage. They have to do all this down here. This has to be all stable so their necks can finally relax and their jaw muscles can relax and their, their head muscles, these temporalis muscles, which are pretty big and they run all the way back here so those can relax also. Because if you're unstable in the, in the lower body and you don't have sense of the ground, which is necessary for proper respiratory mechanics to occur, uh, your up here is gonna stay tight. So they need to work on everything and it takes some time for them to start feeling better uh, because, like I said, they have no muscular integrity. Uh, it doesn't mean they're weak. They could be quite strong, but they're, very, they're only strong in extension. They're only strong with extension muscles. They don't have the adductors, the glute meatuses, the hamstrings, the glutes, the abs. So they're all extender. They're, all, they're using back and neck. That's what they're doing. And calves. Calves, back, neck. <laughs> That's what they love to use to hold themselves up and push themselves forward. You're not feeling compression in the joints, particularly in the hip. Uh, your body will create tension as a compensatory measure. So when there's no compression, you're gonna feel a lot of tension. To decrease the tension, you have to feel compression. So you need ground, you need to internally rotate those femurs on both sides. You gotta get the pelvis to internally rotate on the femur. Uh, you gotta get the pelvis to rotate back on both sides. You need flexion of the rib cage to come forward to open up the posterior rib cage to allow, to allow air to go back there. You need everything, like I said. Um, I don't think I missed everything, so you might, or I don't think I missed anything. So you may have to listen a couple times if it's something that you're very interested. Oh, pelvic floor, because your pelvis is forward on both sides, the pelvic floor gets kind of smushed together. 
so those pelvic floor muscles get tight and they actually descend, so they kind of bulge down a little bit, so a lot of pelvic floor issues can result from a patho-PEC position. Again, it's all about regaining stability throughout the entire body so that autonomic nervous tension can drop. You need compression and integrity of these muscles to stabilize this pelvis, to stabilize the rib cage, to stabilize the scapula so the neck can relax and you can start to sense the ground properly and you can alternate and shift from side to side because you need this pelvis rotating. When your pelvis is like this, it's not rotating, so you're gonna, and you can't rotate your upper back, your mid spine either because it's locked up. So the only way you can rotate is through the lumbar spine and that's where you're gonna start to have SI joint issues because we don't want rotation through the lumbar spine, but what else are you gonna do if you can't get it through your mid spine nor through your pelvis? So there's all sorts of, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, so it, it takes time and you basically have to rebuild everything. And that's really what a patho-PEC is. So hope that made some sense.